Hello everyone, in this video, we will walk through how to generate a PCB enclosure using EasyEDA. EasyEDA supports basic enclosure design. With the enclosure design feature, you can quickly create a shell for your PCB without a need for professional 3D modeling software. First, open your PCB design. Right-click the board outline and select Generate 3D Shell Outline. In the pop-up window, enter the extend distance value. This value determines how far the enclosure extends from the PCB edges. The larger the value, the larger the enclosure. Let's enter 5 mm for now. After confirming, you will be prompted whether to open a new window to preview the 3D view. If you click Open Now, a new browser tab will open to display the 3D preview. Alternatively, you can use the top menu bar to assess the 3D viewer as introduced earlier. However, please note that when you open the 3D view through the menu bar, you need to manually click Import Changes to update the view. As you can see, the enclosure has been generated and appears in the 3D preview. A new green outline also appears in the PCB design interface. Draw on the 3D shell outline layer. If the enclosure looks too large, you can delete this outline and regenerate it with a smaller distance. By default, the generated enclosure is a snap fit close lead structure. You can click the explode icon to preview and adjust the lead's position. Clicking the green outline allows you to modify the enclosure parameters. Under type, you can switch to a slide fit design. However, in this demo, we will stick with the default snap feed structure. Note that the operations are largely the same for both types. Besides the type, you can also customize parameters such as the enclosure height, PCB height, and wall thickness. Use the floating tool to switch between different 3D view modes for better visualization. Next, we will add screw holes to the enclosure. Go to Place, 3D Shell, School Palette, and place a 3D screw hole at the corresponding position on your PCB. This screw palette is added to the 3D Shell top layer. In the 3D view, you will notice a screw hole has appeared on the top lid. Click the screw palette to edit its parameters. Key settings include screw specifications, Stiffener and cotton ball. Under school specifications, you can choose from preferred school size. Let's select M3 for this example. If you use other school types, you can also manually adjust the dimensions below. If you set need stiffener to yes, a reinforced rib will be added to the school pillar for extra stability. If you set the cotton ball to no, the counter sunk area on the opposite side for screw heads will be removed. Adjust this based on your design needs. Repeat the process to place the remaining three screw pillars. Now switch to the 3D shell button layer to continue placing screw holes. If objects in the 3D shell layer are hard to select due to layer overlapping, try hiding other layers temporarily. If the default stiffener collides with components like pin headers, you can disable the stiffener option. Next, we will cut slots in the enclosure to expose connectors. Switch to 3D Shell, Top Layer. Go to Place, 3D Shell, Top Button Slot Region. And draw the areas where slots are needed.
do the same for the bottom layer. Finally, we need to cut a slot for the USB port on the side. Before doing this, draw a datum line to define the slot height. Click 3D shell, side datum line, and place a line on the left side of the USB port. Then select 3D shell, size slot region, click the datum line and draw a rectangle to define the slot. The farther the rectangle is from the datum line, the taller the slot will be. Adjust the size and height of the slot based on your USB connector and the 3D preview. Once the slot is drawn, you can add flays around the corners for a cleaner finish. With that, the 3D enclosure design is complete. Besides cutting slots, you can also add solid features using 3D shell, side entity, and top bottom entity, which work similarly to the slot tools. Once the design is done, go to Export 3D Shell File to export the enclosure file for 3D printing. That's all for this video. Thanks for watching. See you next time.